cheesy slime story time. Our party was level 2 at the time, and consisted of an even more eclectic bunch than usual. We had, Loki, half elf rogue whose various foibles and proclivities have no real bearing on this story, Ling Ling, a Vanara monkey person for you non-PF players ranger, who in addition to being the designated moral compass and mother figure for the team, was in possession of plot artifact, a higher than party level NPC golem, with no interest in anything other than protecting said plot artifact, an animated suit of armor calling itself Mr. Nibbit, and the slime. Those last two are both homebrew, but only the slime really needs explaining. I mean what else is there really to say about a suit of walking armor? It walks, it clanks, it occasionally gets forcefully disassembled, and everyone at the table is obligated to make at least two FMA jokes references a session. Anyway, the slime, who shall hereafter be referred to as Jello, is where the cheese aspect of this story comes into play. Imagine a barely sentient pile of acidic jelly, motivated by the sort of appetite one would usually associate with large cities or small nations. Now give it the ability to cast spells, because who ever heard of a slime rogue or monk? There's a whole host of reasons that this isn't the most unbalanced thing ever, mostly based around the penalties for ever not eating anything, an inability to communicate or use items, and the usual physical characteristics of slimes. But at level 2. These are all massively outweighed by the ability engulf enemies who stray too close, and a flat out immunity to physical damage. I'm sure you can all see where this is going. So our party had been mooching around, doing the usual low level adventurer thing, when we got news that there was some ominous shit, brewing in Ling Ling's hometown, and immediately headed down there to see what was happening. I'm using down literally here by the way, true to form, the monkey people had made their village in the treetops. Except in this case the treetops were really the tree bottoms. See, a few millennia ago, some god got drunk or something, and decided it'd be absolutely hilarious to take a chunk of rock the size of a small moon, suspend it a few thousand miles above an inhabited planet, and then rather forcefully set up a functioning ecosystem on said magically suspended rock. It's important to note that at no point in that description was the word orbit used, the whole thing just sort of hangs there, with gravity very definitely pulling down towards the planet. This has resulted in some very odd flora, fauna, weather patterns, and religions. Anyway, Ling Ling's monkey person hometown was in a forest of ridiculously large trees on the underside of the planetoid. In fact it was close enough to the tree bottoms that a careless step would almost inevitably result in very long, very fatal fall to the planet below. All in all, it was just about the worst place to have a battle, but apparently no one had told the bad guys that. A few minutes after we arrived and talked to the druid monkey in charge of the village, a tingu with a white flag flapped down and told everyone to surrender or be destroyed by their mighty army. It later turned out to be only about 30 guys in total, so it was more of a mighty platoon really, but that probably wouldn't have sounded nearly as impressive. Of course we told the bird to take his surrender offer and shove it up his feathered ass, then mustered the town's militia, which consisted entirely of level 1 and 2 archers, plus the druid monkey. Shortly after mustering, a group of 10 Tengu 8 warriors and 2 bards, all of which were level 4 dropped down out of the trees above us, using their racial glide ability to slow and control their descent. This was made considerably more difficult for them by a barrage of arrows from all our archers, plus a few shots from Ling Ling and our rogue. Two Tengu end up failing their fly checks badly enough to fall off the world, while a lucky third merely crashed into a tree and wound up clinging to it for dear life. Like I said, terrible place to have a battle. So the surviving Tengu landed near the group of archers Ling Ling was leading, and the fight started in earnest. It quickly became apparent that our monkey person allies were going to be of limited assistance, because all of the birds are fighting open handed and had the deflect arrows feet, and the monkey people weren't really good with anything but their bows. Between these facts, and the 2-3 level advantage that Tengu had, Ling Ling and her group got torn up pretty badly while we raced over to support her. Unfortunately, when the rest of us finally got close enough to her platform to participate in the battle, the two Tengu bards cast Grease, Jello and Mr. Nibbit, being in the middle of a narrow walkway, both nearly fell to their deaths. While our rug prudently hung back and occupied himself by firing ineffective crossbow bolts at the missile deflecting Tengu. Ling Ling and most of her archers were knocked off their feet by the grease spell as well, and in a desperate attempt to get back up and resume the fight, our ranger nearly flailed her way off the edge of the platform. At that point our artifact protecting NPC golem scared the hell out of the surviving Tingu, 
who'd assumed he was just an oddly placed statue, by stomping over to Ling Ling and plucking her off the ground before she, and more importantly the plot artifact in her pack, fell off the world. Please take a second to picture a thoroughly grease monkey person, being suspended about 3 meters off the ground by a massive stone golem. While a group of birdmen squawk in outrage and jump up and down in a futile attempt to claw at her. It was a very heroic scene, I assure you. Eventually the Tengu got tired of their retarded game of monkey penator, and casts another grease spell the golem, knocking him over, and resulting in our ranger being flung a considerable distance. Luckily she was flung towards another platform instead of out into space, and after that the rest of us finally arrived and got to work on the Tengu. Of course as we dealt with the last of the birds, another wave dropped out of the branches above the town. Once again, two of the attackers failed their fly checks and fell into space, but this time the survivors landed on a platform that didn't have any PCS, and began annihilating the archers on it. It was at this point that the battle took a slight turn for the stupid. The monkeys, not being suicidal, ran for it, and being monkeys and all, they mostly fled upwards, climbing higher up branches of the upside down trees. The Tengu whose racial bonuses were more about going down than up, attempted to follow the fleeing archers, and failed miserably. The archers, realizing the Tengu couldn't actually catch them, made themselves comfortable, then began pelting the birdmen with arrows as they've repeatedly failed climb checks. As tempting as it was to just sit there and watch the Tengu suck at climbing and die by inches, it wasn't a good long term bet. So we finished up our business with the first group this involved one of them getting shoved across the grease platform and into the not quit to bottomless void, and another being sucked into jello, and ran over to help. Not that the monkeys really needed our help. Possibly due to some sort of dark pact with the RNG gods, the archers were rolling a ridiculous number of 3x crits, while the Tengu were simultaneously sucking at just about everything they did. Aside from the whole climbing thing and not touching the not falling to thiddies like idiots checks, they managed to roll so consistently low in their attacks it was sad. I mean half of them had katanas crit range 18-20 few non pf folks and none of them ever managed a crit. It would have been a cakewalk if we weren't similarly incompetent ourselves. Seriously, we rolled in like the cavalry, and our biggest melee hitter Mr. Nibbit, who in addition to being a walking suit of armor, was equipped with an axe twice as strong as anything the rest of us had proceeded to chain 6 misses, then got slashed to literal pieces. He was eventually put back together, but it was still sad as all hell. Not that the rest of us did much better. Our heroic rogue kept plinking away with his crossbow from max range, Jello was unfamiliar with the entire concept of running and was still oozing along behind the rest of the party. And Ling Ling realizing that she'd never be as good as the high rolling NPC archers decided to try and convince the golem to go in and kick some Tengu ass for her. Aside from crushing the head of the one birdman dumb enough to try attacking him, the golem just stared at our ranger in way that perfectly conveyed how few fucks he gave about our predicament. Well, maybe I'm overstating our incompetence. I mean we were two levels under the Tengu and it was becoming obvious that this wasn't the sort of encounter we were supposed to be able to win. But the NPCs were putting us to shame, so largely thanks to the steady attrition provided by the archers and Tengu's inability to climb at least two crit failed and fell into the void the battle began to tilt in our favor. Then the final wave of Tengu arrived and ruined it. This was obviously the fuck you part of the fight, in addition to a wave of 10 regular guys. There was a boss Tengu, and our allies arrows just bounced off of him. We later found out he was level 10. I mean, seriously? We were too. Bullshit man. Utter bullshit. Anyway, his minions began dropping onto the branches our archers had fled to, boxing them in and hacking through them in short order. We immediately decided that sitting around in the open was stupid, and falling back to the central platform where we had more allied archers and the druid monkey was the better part of Vela. Shortly after we'd all arrived at the platform, the boss Tengu finished his descent, dropping onto the edge of the platform with a few minions like a damned anime boss intro, and possibly starting up a big speech about how we were valiant foes or something. We never found out because Jello cast true shit, then ejected the half-digested Tengu bard he'd engulfed as a massive disgusting projectile. Jello passed the AC check to hit the boss Tengu by the barest of margins, propelling the big bird backwards and over the edge of the platform and into the void, neatly winning the entire encounter for us. Okay, not really, but at the time we didn't know that the boss Tengu was a ranger and had access to Raven's flight, but we felt really damned heroic for a turn or two there. So while the boss flew back up, we pretty much just bum rushed his minions with the help of our remaining archers and the druid monkey. Not the most heroic tactic. 
but we did manage to bring the total number of Tengu pushed or shot off the edge of the world to die a horrible death in the airless space between us and the main planet up to a total of 8. This was actually sort of awkward when the boss flew back up and told his minions to stop killing people, as they were here for slaves and prisoners, not heads. But we persevered in our murder spree, anyway. So the boss returning to the fight was where things really began to fall apart. With him there our NPC allies began to drop in droves, and we definitely weren't going to let ourselves get in melee range of him. I mean we could see the crits he was rolling, there's heroism, and then there's suicide. We sort of hung back with the druid as the last of the NPCs were knocked out, taking range pot shots where we could using enemy corpses in Jello's case. Eventually though, our mook shield ran out and it was time to do or die. We all ran in to either die gloriously or get imprisoned and move on to the inevitable escape arc, while the druid helpfully froze three of the Tengus, along with himself, in place. Anyway, to return to the original subject of cheese, this is where we realized that all the Tengu casters had fallen in one sense or the other, their boss was probably out of range of spells, and none of them had come equipped with a magic weapon. Jello proceeded to cast in large person on himself, then literally rolled into the battle like a goddamned freight train, engulfing the three non-frozen Tengu minions. Simultaneously realizing he's out of useful spells, the boss responded in a blind panic, and attempted to push Jello plus the engulfed Tengus off the edge of the platform. He was immediately sucked in and engulfed us as well. It's wonderful seeing something like that happen to someone else. Now at that point things pretty much devolved into. Watch the DM desperately try to roll a combat defense check higher than Jello's combat bonus. It was actually sort of pathetic, the boss Tengu had 8 levels on the slime. But the checks were based mostly on size and strength, and Jello had been fairly large and tanky even before the enlarge person spell. All the boss decks, HP, combat feats, magic armor, and good quality but not magical weaponry was absolutely useless in the face of this single stacked check. And we all just stood there and watched as he and his minions took steadily mounting con and acid damage. We actually got bored after a while, went off and put Mr. Nibbit back together and were about to get an early start on the corpse looting when the DM finally snapped. He announced that, acting in desperation at his impending demise, the boss Tengu intentionally miscast his last ranger spell it was cheetah's sprint as it happened. So it was obvious why he hadn't bothered using it earlier. Now, our DM loves random magic effects. He has tables of them for almost any scenario including a homebrew class entirely built on them, and his big old table of magical miscast effects is especially large. He went through the list of miscast effects for a minute or so then randomly picked four of them. Two did nothing, but the third just happened to grant the boss Tengu immunity to natural attacks from elementals and oozes for a few turns. We might have lynched the railroading bastard right there, but luckily the fourth random effect dropped the boss down to one horsepower. Not being a semi-sentient blob of eternally hungering acidic ooze to leave a job undone, Jello prepared to use one of the partially digested Tengu minions as a bludgeon and finish things. Then one of Tengu minions the druid monkey had frozen defrosted enough to scream that they surrendered, and spoiled our fun. Honestly most of us didn't really feel inclined towards mercy, and Jello just wanted to eat as many Tengu living or dead as possible, but Ling Ling immediately accepted the Tengu surrender. We grumbled a bit, but the ranger was our party's designated moral compass, and she was the only one of us who had a real stake in the fight, so we eventually deferred to her and the druid monkey, after a little debate. They decided that since most of the monkey people had merely been incapacitated instead of killed and the town had been offered a legitimate chance to surrender, the Tengu were dicks, but not quite deserving of cold-blooded murder. The 13 surviving Tengu were collected, relieved of weapons, armors, and small valuables, and shoved into a closet or something to be dealt with later. The dead ones who hadn't fallen off the edge of the world were fed to Jello. That's the end of it really. It had been a matter of 4 level 2 PCS. 20 or so level 1 and 2 NPC archers and their level 5 druid leader, against 30 level 4 enemies and a level 10 boss, and despite all odds and logic, we'd won. Sure, it was cheese, luck, and enemy incompetence that had saved the day more than any real skill on our part, but a victory is a victory. The plot ordained doom of Ling Ling's hometown had been averted earning us a bunch of worshipful allies and a new base of operations if we ever needed it. We'd humiliated a boss 5 times our level and by extension our DM, and our party's wealth jumped from 2k to over 20k once we were done looting everything. It was a good day. This story...
it's different. Like, you know, it's, it's very unusual. I thought it was very different from what I'm usually doing. Like, you know, I don't know why. It just I don't know, it really appealed to me. Like, you know, I don't know. There's something about this idea of, like, an upside-down jungle moon. Like, you know, when gravity just still, like, you know, works the same way on the... But, I don't know. It's dead unusual. And, I don't know. I, I thought it was really interesting. So I thought, fuck it, I like this. You know what I mean? But, uh, no, what also I really liked was, like, you know, the idea of using, like, an ooze as a player character. Like, you know, yeah, it sounds really overpowered being immune to physical damage for the most part but like you know there are some serious downsides like you know i don't know if well i'm sure most of you guys played world of warcraft at some point and in the first raid if i remember it was something temple one of your first came out and was it anchorage it was the one where you got like you know them there we spider mounts you get a little round. If any of you guys remember i'm sure you will tell me the name down below but there was a boss in there i remember um and it was a big ooze and it was, it, it could only be, it, you could bring it down to a certain amount of health, but you needed frost damage to be able to actually kill it. So, like, you know, if you got the right tools, like, you know, it can be incredibly weak, you know what I mean? And, of course, like, you know, of course, not being able to talk or really be able to use items or anything is, yeah, not ideal. But, like, you know, I don't know, I don't know, I thought it was very interesting. And I like doing videos about stuff that most people aren't doing, you know what I mean? Like, who who thinks... I'm going to play as an ooze, you know what I mean? It's just very unusual, very different, and I just love the idea of, like, an upside-down jungle world thing. I don't know. <laughs> very weird. But anyway, like, as always, I hope you guys have enjoyed. Like, you know, click that wee notification bell to stay up to speed. And let us know what you thought. I don't know, this is very different. I don't know how well you guys will take it, whether you guys will like it or not, but I thought it was something a bit unusual. So, like, you know, like, let us know down below, and I'll see you in the next video. If you haven't already check out my Redbubble portfolio, you might just find something you like. This... this is, is not okay. This needs to stop now. This is cancer. This... this is so much cancer that I can feel the tumors growing on my back. And it's way down heavy on me, and it's not okay. Can you help a nigga out and just stop this? Please?